Well, we are all familiar with the Great Pyramid and the Pyramid Complex at Giza. I think everybody has seen these pictures before. Now I get all sorts of questions about like, you know, could the Egyptians have really built this themselves almost 5,000 years ago? Maybe they were held by space aliens or something like that. That's a load of nonsense. And I'm going to show you that's a load of nonsense. It's going to be very clear by the end of it that this was not the work of aliens. This is the work of normal people through a process of trial and error over a period of a century or so building one of the great marvels of the world. So um, now here's a pyramid complex in Giza. That's in, Northern Pyram um, that's in Northern Egypt. I actually want to take you someplace different. Um, this is the Jos. Now, by the way, this is still in Giza on the, now, by the way, um, just so, well, we'll go over here. Actually, before we go any further, uh, let's stop right here. I want to zoom out and show you something. So the pyramids are tombs. They're not temples to living deities. All the pyramids pretty much are on the west bank of the Nile, whereas your temples of Luxor and the other stuff that's devoted to life is on the east side of the Nile. And the reason why for that is the sun. The sun rises, the sun is born in the east, and the sun dies, the sun sets, in the west so the pyramids being tombs are all on the west side of the nile where the sun goes to die at dusk each night um but let's go back down here let's take a look at this pyramid now you're seeing a lot of distortion because this is google trying to piece together a bunch of satellite images into a 3d picture but so the swirling is just distortion from google earth but notice the top of the pyramid itself let me see if i can't show you what's going on there so here we have a picture of the pyramid this is Jozer's pyramid now by the way you'll notice something you can see it at this angle one side is considerably longer than the other you can really see it at the top but this side is longer than this side it is not a perfect square the base of it it is not like the other pyramids it is a rectangular pyramid and you will see that um very clearly um when i go back to now oh, there you are so let's go back here and so here you can see the complex it would have whoa did i just get really big or something okay i i think i'm a manageable size i'm going to shrink myself down a little bit but you see it here you can see it is rectangular it's not a square base and the reason why is this was never meant to be a pyramid. Well, at least it wasn't originally meant to be a pyramid. It was meant, originally meant to be something called a, a mastaba. So here is a mastaba. It is a slab-like object which covers and protects a tomb. And originally, Jozier's pyramid was a mastaba. And they built the mastaba and Jozier wasn't dead yet. So he went to talk to a friend of his, this this guy by the name of Imenhotep. Imenhotep, who is probably the arguably the most famous architect ever. Sorry, Frank Lloyd Wright. Well, let's face it, Frank Lloyd Wright was never worshipped as a god. He's one of the very few people in ancient Egypt who wasn't a pharaoh but was still worshipped. And we do know that he was a real person. There are contemporary references to him in Egyptian writing, so we know he was real. Um, he wasn't just somebody that was made up. But anyway, um, Jozier basically says, I'm not dead. This mastaba is great. Can we make it a little bigger? And um, they make it a little bigger. And the idea is he added stuff. The potom gets more, more elaborate. And he keeps asking for a bigger and bigger mastaba. And then Imenhotep says, I have another idea. Let's put a mastaba on top of a mastaba on top of a mastaba. And now we have four mastabas stacked up. And we have a pyramid. <laughs> and Jojo says, I love it. And they do it. And he's still not dead yet. So um, they're going to go a little further here. And they go a little further. Yeah, but I mean, this pyramid, the pyramid, as you see, it was never intended to be that. Well, well, it wasn't at first intended to be there. It was kind of an afterthought. And there's all sorts of different, you know, you know, not only are they trying a different style and they're changing the style, they're also changing the materials um, as they go using different types of limestone and so on and so forth. Not mud bricks. The mud bricks have been used for uh, mustaba before, you know, 
but they're really experimenting as they go along in order to produce this what is often referred to as the first of all the pyramids. Uh, but again, it's, you know, job well done. Looks pretty good for 5,000 years old, but they, they were not done experimenting. So I'm going to go take you to another pyramid. Okay, next pyramid. Come on, come on. Okay, so the next one I'm going to take you to is the medium pyramid. M-E-I-D-U-M pyramid. I hope I've got the right one. Here we go. Okay, you're going a little further south here, and there it is. And I'd like to show you a few things about it. Now, actually, let me pull up the picture. Um, I happen to like this picture because, sure, it's black and white, but it's actually a pretty good quality picture. Now, this pyramid, you notice, they're still messing around with the styles, but they built it. They started out building it much more, oh, how should we say, vertical than the previous pyramids. Um, they're definitely going for something a little bit taller, a little bit straighter, but there was there was a problem with that. And the problem was they start building it, and they're building it on limestone, but limestone has limited ability to take the weight that was being placed on it. Every time you go a little bit higher and a little bit higher, there is more weight on the back. And at some point, it suffered a cataclysmic collapse. Now, we don't know when this collapse happened. We're, you know, there are some indications that it happened years and years and years after it was built. There are other indications that it happened even before it was finished. Um, these pyramids would have an entire temple complex built around them. That does not seem to have been completed. So there is some strong evidence that this pyramid wasn't even finished before it started collapsing. And there's no rule to say that having collapsed at one point, it couldn't collapse still further at a later point. So this pyramid collapsed. Obviously, the sides were too steep. And that leads us to our next pyramid that we're going to take a look at, the very famous Bent Pyramid. And here we go. Still staying on the West Bank. Now, you notice something about it. It is bent. Yeah, now, I mean, what's going on here? Well, at some point, partially through the construction, they decided that this wasn't working. They start out building it at a very steep angle. And at some point, they abandoned that angle and they went with a less steep angle. And we're not sure why. Some people think that the previous pyramid, the Medum pyramid, must have collapsed. And that's how far they got when the other pyramid collapsed. And they said, uh oh, we need to be a little more um, cautious in our construction. And they changed it. Some people think that it may have already started showing signs of instability. And that's why they changed the angle. Whatever the reason is, they changed it halfway through. They started out at one angle and realized, for whatever reason, this was not going to work, and they changed it. And this leads us to the final one in this very rapid period of pyramid building, the Red Pyramid. Now, by the way, um, the Red Pyramid um, is named because, um, well, it, it looks red. And the reason it's so darn red is because that's the color of the local limestone. These pyramids would have been finished with a layer of fine cut limestone, and they would have just gleamed. But underneath it, they're just basically using cheaper, very local filler limestone, which was never meant to be visible to the human eye. But when the outside is removed, that's what you see. And this is kind of a red limestone, and so that's why it's called the Red Pyramid. Now, the Red Pyramid is... Remember how we they, the Bent Pyramid, they only did part of it in the way that they, you know, they, they started at a steeper angle and they went to a more gradual angle at the top. This is that same gradual angle the whole way up. They, they realized that that second angle they used for the other pyramid seems to be working and they built at that angle. And this is the first, what people call a true pyramid. And it is almost as big as the Great Pyramid. Um, but not quite. Um, but let's just go back to the Great Pyramid, shall we? 
and you know everybody says okay the great pyramid bum, 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 bum. finally after what was it about 80 years i'd have to check i also need to get better with my spelling they say aha they perfected it so the idea is the great pyramid has been perfected well it is really 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 big it is so big that when you go out there and you stand in the shadow the temperature changes dramatically it is incredibly impressive uh, i don't know if i would go so far as to say perfected so okay let's go take a look at that great pyramid and there it is it is very effective, very impressive, yes. But perfect, I would not say it is. Okay, now here's why. I mean, it's a marvel. It is an absolute marvel of ancient engineering. But they, even still, the, the Egyptians are still experimenting. So let's take a look inside. Um, here's the diagram of the inside. So you got the various chambers, you got the gal the grand gallery, and you've got the king's cha grand um, chamber. So the inside is basically locally produced um, limestone. The ex outside would have been covered with a higher quality limestone that would have been brought in. But the inside structures, the places where you really need it to be strong to hold up the weight of the pyramid and to keep it from collapsing, that's all done with granite. And that granite came all the way down from Aswan, where way back then there was no dam. Um, there was a cataract, but the granite was um, hewed out of the rock there where there is granite and then taken by boat, presumably, down the Nile. It, now, granite is much harder. It's much stronger, and that also makes it much stronger. It also makes it a heck of a lot more expensive because you're trying to cut without the benefits of things like modern day diamond blades and stuff like that. So cutting granite, let's just say the ancient Egyptians weren't using it for um, countertops. It would be very difficult, tremendous amount of labor, plus the distance you have to ship it. It makes it very expensive. So you wanna use as little of it as possible. But this, this, um, this chamber, this king's chamber, was very hefty, a lot of granite, way more than was needed. They went way beyond what they needed to support it. But again, these are people who are basically learning to do this through a process of trial and error. And when it comes to the king's chamber, better safe than sorry. Use more granite, even if it's more expensive because you want the king to be okay for eternity. So, you know, they're very much um, working with trial and error. So, you know, what works? Okay, this worked, let's keep doing it. This doesn't work, okay, we need to change it. That's what they're doing. Now, by the way, um, recently there was a study done with neutrinos, which has detected that there seems to be some empty spaces in the, in the pyramid, a big void, a small void. Some people have speculated that these might be undiscovered chambers. It could be. Um, I actually, frankly, think that they're just empty space. You know, you're building this enormous structure. It's incredibly expensive. And you're not sure whether your structure can hold up the weight. If you created empty spaces within the structure without anything in it, you reduce the cost because you don't need material. You decrease the weight. These, these This void, the big void, seems to be over the main gallery. By reducing the weight over the main gallery, you reduce the load on the supports. Remember, you're not sure if the structures you put there are going to hold up this biggest thing ever built pyramid. So I frankly think it's just empty, you know, space just because they're just being cautious. You know, why, you know, why pay more to put more weight on a structure you're not sure is going to hold together. But anyway, we, we, at some point we'll find out what those are. We don't know yet. But again, is it perfect? Did they perfect it at that point? And I'm gonna go back to our little pyramid complex. Well, not little, obviously it's not little. Um, the Great Pyramid for Khufu, the Second Pyramid for Khafre. Now, by the way, there you do see a little bit of warping and stuff like that. But I wanna direct your attention to this littler pyramid, the smallest of the Great Pyramids that was meant for Minkari who was the last of the pharaohs to have a pyramid at Gizmo. These, by the way, are not for other pharaohs, they're for his wife. And this pyramid and this pyramid 
have something new and different going on with them. And I want to show you. So here is Minkari's Pyramid. As you can see, it is considerably smaller. It is still immense. Look at the stairs going up to it. But it is much, much smaller. So what is going on with it? Well, here's what it is. Part, if not all, of this pyramid was coated not with the high-quality limestone, which made it, would have made it just glow in the sun, but with granite. This granite, now this, by the way, would have been much, much more expensive than the, the limestone. It's, after all, harder, more difficult to cut, and more difficult to shape. It would have been had to have been transported a much greater distance, seen as coming all the way from Aswan. So it would have been much more, exper uh, much more expensive, which may have something to do with why this pyramid is so much smaller than the other two pyramids. Is if, you're gonna, if you know you're going to have to build, cover this pyramid with something that's much more difficult to get and more expensive as a result, you have to be a little less ambitious size-wise. But the question is, well, why? Why the granite? I suspect that the reason why is even at that time, they were starting to see that there were some problems with the limestone that were coating the other pyramids. And I suspect that this was a decision that was made in order to make a better, if smaller pyramid, a more enduring, more permanent structure. They were deciding that, well, they can't coat the whole darn thing in limestone. Part of it at least has to be covered with granite, even if it makes it more expensive. And so you can see, even at the time the Great Pyramid was being made, you know, for, I believe it is um, Macari's grandfather. Even at that time, they still hadn't perfected it and they were still working on it. But now, if you think that this was, now I hope by now you're convinced that this in fact was the result of ordinary people learning from their mistakes and making progress the way, you know, modern man has gone from the Wright brothers flying their first plane to having a space station going around the earth today. Um, you know, that's about, the, you know, we're talking about that same amount of time. And they did improve and they did make progress. But just to hammer home the, the point that they were not being helped by any great extra intelligence, I want to go someplace else, not in Egypt, but in Rome. Um, they're trying to direct me to a hotel. There we go. So here we are flying to the Pantheon in Rome and down into the center of Rome. And there it is. Now the Pantheon was built Nowhere near as old as the Egyptian pyramids. The pyramids are on average about two and a half times older than the Pantheon. And you're probably thinking, what on earth am I doing here looking at the Pantheon? Here we are. By the way, that's Piazza Navona. Anyway, let's, let's, let's take a look at the Pantheon and you will see why. So where is the Pantheon? Where's my picture of the Pantheon? Da, 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 da. There is the picture of the Pantheon. And now, by the way, this is actually not the part I want to bring to your attention. The part I would like to bring to your attention is the, the part that is not the front, because the bulk of this structure is made not with marble, like the front, not with limestone, like the pyramids, but from concrete. And as such, it is held up really, really well. It is almost 2,000 years old, um, 40, about roughly 40% of the age of the pyramids. But as you can see, it is in dramatically better condition. Now, by the way, the dome here. Now, now okay, now the dome was, the inside of the dome was coated with bronze when it was first built. And that bronze was there up until about 500 years ago when it was removed. But, you know, you, you go in there and there are pigeons flying in and out through the oculus. They're, you're looking down up through the hole in the ceiling. Um, you know, does rain get blown in and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, but you can see it is in excellent condition. A um, few cracks here or there. Now, it does have the advantage of the fact that it's been in continual use. So there have been people doing maintenance in some form or another for the last 2,000 years. But you have to admit, it is in much, much better condition. It is 40% um of the age of the pyramids 
but you have to admit it's got a lot less than 40% of the damage that the pyramids have gone through. The pyramids are, you know, they're not in great shape by comparison. Um, now, people have taken stuff away for construction. People have taken stuff away for souvenirs, but you can look into these cracks here. The cracks, when you talk about, you know, material parts of the pyramids that have disappeared from within the cracks between the rocks, that's not tourists. That's not souvenir hunters reaching, you know, meters and meters in deeper into the rock. That's the rare rain that hits Giza, dissolving the limestone and taking it away. Let's just face it. When the Pantheon is the age that the pyramids are now, it's going to look a lot better than the pyramids are now. And, you know, the fact is the Romans could have made this out of concrete because you have concrete, it's gravel, well, gravel you can get, and it's cement. Well, did the ancient Egyptian, and, it, and what is cement made of? Well, it's made of limestone. Well, we know that the ancient Egyptians had limestone. Oh, heck, where's my picture? Well, I mean, the pyramids themselves are built with limestone. You know, the pyramids are built with limestone on limestone. You know, so they had plenty of limestone with which they could have built the pyramids. What else is, goes into cement? Well, you need water. Well, the Egyptians have water, lots and lots of water. The Nile is enormous. It provides all the water for Egypt. And yes, it would have provided certainly enough water to make enough cement to build the pyramids. And you need sand. Does Egypt have sand? Good gravy, does Egypt have sand? 90% of Egypt is covered with sand. So they have all the ingredients that they needed for cement. Add in some gravel, you got concrete. They could have built, just like the Romans built the Pantheon out of concrete, the Egyptians could have built the pyramids out of concrete. It would have been much easier, much cheaper, but the, the Egyptians didn't know how to make concrete. The Egyptians were doing the best they could with the technology and materials that they had. And frankly, they did an amazing job. Now, I'm gonna tell you one other thing. There is one other flaw with the pyramids. And the flaw with, uh, the, Great Pyra with the pyramids is simple. The big flaw with the pyramids Let's go over to Egypt. Is there so darn noticeable? They are easy to spot, and it's like a big sign advertising that any grave robber looking for treasure, hey, this is the place to go. And they did. And they were robbed. Fairly soon after completion, these tombs were robbed. And so later generations, for example, like Rant, there's no pyramid for Amenhotep, or Tutmos III doesn't have a pyramid, and Ramses II doesn't have a pyramid. Although these were prolific builders of temples, they didn't build pyramids. They could have. The temples they did were technically extremely demanding, but they didn't build pyramids because um, they realized um, that pyramids are, in fact, a bad idea. And so, in future dynasties, in future dynasties, still staying on the west side of the, um, the Nile, they built in the Valley of the Kings. And the Valley of the Kings has a couple big advantages. It's isolated, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's very little brush there. Nobody would have any excuse to go there. Not even if you were herding goats, you couldn't say, oh, I was herding my goats here and because my goats need to eat sand. They're basically an easy place to close off, an easy place to hide the tombs, to hide them. In fact, you know, King Tut's tomb, the only tomb which we found that has not, you know, completely escaped grave robbers until um, certain, English people came along, um, was in the Valley of the Tomb, where it was hidden, or Valley of the Kings. So they would hide them out here. By the way, if uh, one of the reasons they built them here, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a mountain which is over the Valley of the Kings, which does look awfully pyramid-like. But 
the idea was no big markers saying this is where you know the you know the gold is you remote location not easily visible i mean all the pyramids were easily visible to the people on the nile this area you cannot see them so you, you know a farmer down here couldn't observe what was going on and make his move when he felt like it so basically no more pyramids we're going to build our tombs hewed into the rock and hope that those will remain undisturbed protecting the pharaohs for all eternity and um well yeah that didn't work out either but i hope you don't feel i hope you i've given you reason to understand that if you're saying that the pyramids were built by space aliens you're really not giving the egyptians enough credit i think it was herodotus who said that the egyptians were the cleverest of all people although i think he was also quoting somebody else um yeah, give them credit they worked hard it wasn't just the decades that took that it took to build the great pyramids it was a century of innovation and trial and error which led up to that and the egyptians deserve credit for what they created i hope you've enjoyed this video and have a nice day bye bye